All right, now I'm Dimitris Christou and it's time to create something nice in Blender. And you'll see in a while what we'll build. I'll hit the X key to delete the default cube and hit 7 on my mirror keypad and then 5 to switch to top all of you. I'll hit shift A and add mesh plane and I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit ctrl R and about here I want a loop cut here and I'll scroll my mouse wheel up once for two loop cuts and click the left mouse button to confirm ctrl R over here to loop cuts and click the left mouse button now I'll hit the A key to deselect all and A again to select all and I'll hit the S key to scale my plane here down. Okay. And now I'll select one, hold down the shift key, two, three and four. I'm selecting the uh, top vertices here. I'll hit E and Y to extrude on the Y axis. And I'll extrude them at about here. Select the vertices on the left. E and X and about here ok select the vertices on the right hit the E key to extrude and X to extrude on the X axis ok and now I'm selecting the bottom vertices here select them all ok and E and Y to extrude on Y axis and about here and now I'll hit the E key for another extrusion on Y axis. I'll hit the S key to scale those vertices here up on the on the X axis. And about here. And now hit the E key for another extrusion on the Y axis. Okay. E for another extrusion, a tiny one and S and X to scale on the X axis and about here and E and Y for a final extrusion OK now I'll hit the tab key to switch back to object mode and add a solidify modifier for my cross here for my object and let's see how it looks I'll increase the thickness for the solidify modifier set it up to 0 0.003 perhaps 0 0.03 ok I'm hitting 7 again on my numeric keypad to switch to top earth of you and this will be the base cross here and I'll add a material to my object click new I'll change the diffuse color bring it uh, to a nice uh, bright orange color I'll bring the diffuse intensity up to 1 bring the specular intensity down to 0 and set the mid value here from 0 to 0 0.9 ok so now I'm hitting shift D to duplicate my cross here and hit X to move the duplicated cross on the X axis and I'll now hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and select 1 and 2 selecting the top middle point and hit G and Y move them in the Y axis, select those G and X select or perhaps move them a bit more G and X, OK select those two and G and X, OK and I'll now hit the A key to deselect all and B click and drag and hit G and Y to move it on the Y axis at about here. OK. Now, another thing I want to do with my objects, and they'll be used as particles or crosses here, is to select, I'm selecting the base cross, hitting the tab key and hit the A key to deselect all, hit B, select the bottom vertices here, and I'll hit Shift S and move the cursor to selected and then hit the tab key and switch to and move over to the object menu click it move over to transform and move the origin where the 3d cursor is and we want our origin here because this is the base of our object 
Okay, selecting this one, hitting the tab key, hit the A to deselect all and B for the selection tool, click and drag and hit shift S and cursor to select it and now tab to switch to object mode and move over to object and transform and origin to 3D cursor. Okay. Now hit shift S and move our uh, cursor here to the center. Okay. Now I'm selecting the base cross again. Hit shift D for another duplicate and hit X to move it on the X axis. And now hitting the tab key. Now select 1, 2, 1 and 2 again in the middle. Hit G and Y, move them away on the Y axis. Select those two, G and X, and move them on the X axis. Perhaps a bit more, okay. Select those two, G and X, and move them away, okay. And what we actually do here is just creating some uh, variations for our particles, and they're going to be particles for this scene, our crosses here, and what I want is to have, you know, some different crosses to be used in our scene. Now selecting the base cross here, hit shift D for a duplicate and X to move the duplicate on the X axis. And let's modify this one and hit the tab key to switch from uh, object to edit mode. Select 1, 2, 3, 4. And now hit X and select delete faces. Select 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 4 and hit X and select delete faces over to the right side 4 and X and delete faces and for those as well 1, 2, 3, 4 and hit X to delete faces OK Now I'm selecting 1, 2 and hit Z and Y Remove them down Select those two, hit G and X, move them in. OK. Select those two, G and X, and move them in as well. OK. Now let's see our cross here. I'll hit the A key to deselect all, hit B. Click and drag, select those, and hit G and Y. Let's make this one taller. OK. Hitting the Tab key again. To switch back to object mode and I'll select my cross here again shift D for another duplicate and X to move the duplicate on the X axis and I'll hit the tab key hit A to deselect all hit B click and drag Z and Y grab on the Y axis A to deselect all B Z and X move on the X axis A to deselect all B click and drag G and X to move on the X axis. And I'll hit the A key to deselect all, hit B, click and drag, and hit G and Y to move on the Y axis. Let's see. Okay, looks nice. Now tab key again. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's build another one. This time I'll duplicate this one, shift D and X. OK, and hit the tab key, Z and Y, at about here, and now I'll move over here and hit the E key to extrude, and extrude on the X axis, at about there, and now I'll hit S and Y, scale on the Y axis, OK, again, 1, 2, E to extrude on the Y axis and S and X to scale on the X axis. Alright, and once more E to extrude and X to extrude on the X axis at about here and now S and Y to scale on the Y axis. Okay. Now I'm hitting the tab key and I think we do have now pretty much six crosses here but feel free to build more uh, I think for a good result you should have 
at about 10 crosses or more. I'll stop here. I think you've seen how we can build those and of course you can uh, search for images on Google and uh, create even more shapes. I'll move on. I'll hold on the shift key, select them all and hit M and move them to the second layer and I'll also move to the second layer and hit Control G to put them all in a group and I'll change the name of the group from group to cross okay now I'll move over to the first layer and hit shift A to add mesh a plane I'll hit the S key to scale my plane up and I'll scale it 20 times Okay. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit W for the specials menu and click subdivide. Let's set the number of cuts. I'll set them up to 8. And I'll also add some uh, fractal here. Just creating some uh, sort of bumpiness here for our, for our ground. Let's set it to 0 0.1. Okay, I think it was good at 0. Point. Let's set it to 0 0.15. Okay. I'll hit the tab key to switch back to object mode. And click this little key icon. We want to move to the modifiers panel and I'll add a subdivision surface modifier. And I'll also click smooth under the shading here. Okay. So time to uh, frame our camera. I'll hit 1 on my mirror keypad to switch the front auto view and hit the Del key on my mirror keypad again to frame the object. Scroll my mouse wheel in and hit Ctrl, Alt and 0 to position my camera and I'll click this frame here to select my camera. And we have the uh, object transform options here. You can see the location, rotation and scale. I'll set the X location to 0 and move back and of course I'm bring the Z value here up to 0 0.5 and then move back again let's set it at minus 22 or 21 for the Y axis okay I'll also delete the default lamp here I won't be needing a light I'll hit the X key and select delete alright now I'm selecting my plane and we'll add a particle system to our plane. Hit the plus here to add a particle system and we'll change the type to hair and I'll also click advanced for the advanced options on the hair. I bring the normal for the emitted geometry here to 0 0.1 or perhaps 0 0.02 for my hair here and I'll click random for the distribution and I'll also let's see the uh, amount yeah, the, uh, the emission here number is set to 1000 I'll bring it down to 500 and I'll also add some children and click simple we have the display set to 10 and the render set to 100 We'll set the render down to 20 and let's add a bit of clump here. It's set to 0, let's set it to 0, 0, 0 0.01. Okay, and I want to increase the rounding of the child around the parent here. I'll set it to 0 0.7 and let's see. I'll also add some uh, brownian force here for my for my grass. Let's set it to 0 0.005. And as you can see, it takes a lot of you know trial to get it to look how you want it to. And I'll add for my uh, for my plane here the material, the bright orange material. But for the particle system here, I'll deselect the emitter. 
because I don't want the emitter to be rendered. So I'll hit F12 now, take a look at an image, and I think it looks pretty nice. I'll just bring the normal for my uh, emission down, let's say to 0 0.015. And I'll bring the rendered uh, amount for the children here up to 25. And let's add some roughness 0 0.1 or perhaps. You see, you have to put here some really, really low values in order to keep your hair in place and not having some crazy results. I think it looks nice. I'll bring this one down to 0 0.001. Okay. And I'll hit F12 to render another image. And I think it looks pretty nice. You know, feel free to modify this one as our focus is, as you can see here, not the grass, but I want us to take a look at how we're, uh, we use the crosses to build another particle system. So I'll change this one to cross and I've added by hitting the plus icon here a second particle system on my plane and I'll set a number to 500 and of course I'll click group because I want my hero system here, my particle system not to use uh, lines, path or halo or anything like that we wanted to use the group and the group will be cross and of course, we have to also change the type from emitter to here. All right. Now, as you can see, we have our crosses here appearing, but they're clearly facing the wrong way. And we can fix it by selecting the camera, hitting 7, and I'll hit D to grab it, move it at about here, and hit R and Z. Rotate it for 90 degrees on the z-axis. And of course you can also move over to the second layer and rotate your crosses here to match the, to match the environment, to make them uh, also be rotated as, a, as an emitted particles. But I think it will be faster to just move the camera and make it faces, face the crosses. Okay. I'll bring the x value here up, the z excuse me value, value here up. I've set it to 0. Point, let's set it to 1. And I'll also, now that I have the camera here selected, bring the focal length down to 25. Okay. Now I'll select the plane. I think I have way too many crosses here. I'll bring the uh, particle, the emission number here down to 300. And I'll also, I, let's click the advanced options, and I'll set some random size here, some uh, random value for the size, and I'll set it from 0 to 0 0.7. Okay, and I'll select my camera now and move it down at about here. Or the better thing to do is hit 1 on your numeric keypad or perhaps 3 and let's zoom in to see our camera and what you can also do here is hit G to grab the camera find an interesting point where it passes right next to some crosses but it uh, makes sure you don't pass through one of them if you want to you feel free to do it but I think It'll be nicer if our camera just passes close to the crosses and not through them. Okay. I think we're good at about there. And of course I have to move closer. And set the X here to 20. Alright. So, time to add some animation. And move over to the render options. Click this little icon. And I'll set the end frame. Let's set it to 450, okay, and let's move to the final frame to 450, 
and we have the camera selected and I'll hit the I key to insert location keyframe. Alright, now moving back to frame 1 and over to the transform options here. Let's change the location for the camera. I'll move it. Okay, and let's leave it at about here at minus 17. Alright, and I'll hit the I key again and insert a new location keyframe. So I'll hit the play key now. Let's see how it all looks. And I think it looks pretty nice. Alright. Now I'm hitting the escape key. Let's move some frames up. And about here. And what I want now is to uh, add the focal point for my camera. I'm moving over to the camera options, to the object data for the camera. I'll check limits so I can see the focal limits for the camera here. And I'll bring the distance up. Let's set it to about 4.5. OK. And I'll hit 0 on my numeric keypad to switch to camera perspective view. And select the plane. And another thing you want to fix for the plane here, for the particle settings, is in the second particle system, the cross one, we also want to have the emitter not appearing in the render. So I'll hit F12. To render an image. Alright. Looks pretty nice so far. I think I'll change the, uh, the hair here in a while. I don't like it. But let's uh, move on. I'll split my 3D view and change the top view here to a node editor. And we want to use the render nodes and click use nodes. So we're getting a render layer node and a composite node. Let's move them to the side. I'll hit Shift A and add output viewer. Move the viewer to the side as well. And I'll hit Shift A and add filter a glare node. I'm clicking and dragging the glare node. Let's connect it. OK. Now I'm selecting the viewer and click backdrop so we can see the backdrop here, the rendered image. And I'll change the glare node here from Strix to Fog Low. And I'll bring the threshold down. Let's set it to 0 0.1. OK. And I'm selecting the glare node and hitting Shift D to duplicate it. And I'll use another glare node. Connect the output of the second glare node to the viewer. OK. I think this one looks pretty nice. And now that we have the uh, depth for our camera, I'll hit Shift A and add filter. Let's add the defocus node. Connect this one as well. And for the defocus node, we'll also need to take the Z output here from the render layers and put it to the defocus node. OK. Now what we need to do is a, a check UZ buffer. And we'll also change the f-stop value here from 128. Let's set it to 40. Let's take a good look. OK. Let's set it to 20. OK, and we now have some blur here kicking in. I hope you can see it. Let's bring the f-stop down to 15. OK. And now I'll bring the maximum blur here down from 16. Let's bring it down to 10. All right. And now you can see what we're getting. I'll uncheck preview. OK. And now it looks pretty, pretty nice. And I'll also hit Shift A and add Distort. And I'll add a Lens Distortion node. Connect this one as well. And I'll click Fit. 
and set the dispersion value here to 0 0.05 and I think we're good okay now in order for the uh, nodes here to affect the final uh, output you have to take the uh, output from the end node from the lens distortion as it is now and put it to the input of the composite node okay now I'll uh, bring my 3D view up and I want to modify my grass a bit I don't like it the way it looks I'm clicking the particle system let's change the name of this one to grass okay I'll bring the emission number up to 1000 or perhaps let's set it up to 2000 okay and move over to the children let's see I'll bring the render up to 40 and let's change the random variation to the side of the child particles let's say 0.5 and I'll also bring the clamp down to 0 0.005 and bring the rounding down, let's say to 0 0.1 and I'll also make them let's make them a bit longer by changing the normal value, I'll set it to 0 0.02 okay and as I said before you uh, you might want to fiddle with your uh, with your particle settings here in order to achieve a better looking grass and what I want here is let's render to see it and what I want here is to have some empty space here in the grass I don't want my scene here to be filled with grass or because it look you know pretty much everything will look orange and we won't be seeing the crosses here in our scene so now I'll hit the escape key I'll just bring the uh, the normal value here for the emission back to 0 0.015 and Let's see the brownian here, I'll set it to 0 0.004 or perhaps 0 0.005. Alright. Now uh, move over to the render panel and click render. Let's render another image. Okay, I think it looks pretty nice. And time to set up an animation. I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view and let's see how the animation looks and I think it looks pretty nice uh, we have a frame count of 30 frames per second so this animation will last for uh, 15 seconds I think it's pretty nice if you uh, also do want you might move over to the graph editor and select the camera and you can also change the let's delete the Y, hit the X key to delete the Y and the Z location where we do not need them. You can also move over to key and change the interpolation mode to linear if you want your camera to keep a constant spin during the animation. But I think I'm hitting Ctrl Z to get my uh, curve here back. But I really like the way it starts slowly and then it stops and slows down as it stops. So I'm keeping my um, uh, graph here as it is. And I think that's pretty nice. I'll save my file. Click File, Save As. And let's call this one Grave Yard. and click save as blender file okay